Hello Plasma Cam world. I'm Robert with Learn Plasma Cam. Thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. I really hope that you guys enjoy learning uh, what I have to share as much as I do uh, sharing it with you and hope it helps you uh, in your home shop or your business. Uh, first of all, thank you for the great responses to the survey that I posted on the Facebook groups uh, looking for a good topic. Uh, for this video. So there were some really great additions uh, to the list that I started and I'm definitely going to use some of those for future videos and also be sure to incorporate some of the uh, answers to those things uh, into future Learn Plasma Cam workshops uh, that we have um, all over. So uh, the winner today however was uh, how do you start uh, back to cutting uh, where the machine left off um, in the event of accidentally clicking uh, and uh, losing your complete selection uh, and it, it really <laughs> it comes up more often than you would think um, typically my helper does it and uh, then that leaves me uh, with the uh, screen with all of the cut paths unselected and uh, no idea where it actually uh, left off. And if you have chosen to have your cut paths ordered to reduce heat, it has jumped all around. And so nobody wants to go through uh, and turn off the cutting and let it go through and follow all of those cut paths on a big file. So there is a way uh, to uh, select the cut paths that have yet to be cut. So we're going to look at that and, and first let's kind of get started with a file. Uh, so what we're going to do is look at uh, how this process happens. Uh, so here we're going to be cutting uh, some uh, material. We're going to cut a sign out. Uh, this happens to be um, 20 gauge mild steel, cutting it with fine cut. Uh, consumables on the hypertherm set at 45 amps uh, and we're cutting at 325 inches a minute uh, but obviously we have our acceleration uh, set down so that it will uh, make nice smooth uh, and pretty cuts so we're moving along here just fine uh, and the uh, cut path order on this for demonstration uh, I set it to reduce heat I'm going to tell you that I very very rarely uh, use that setting. Uh, I find that if your cut height is correct, your acceleration settings are good, and you have it set to disable height control when your cut speed slows down for that acceleration, uh, and you do take the time to do your calibration cuts, uh, but almost non-issue uh, with plate warping. So. Um, I don't typically use this setting. I use minimize rapid travel most of the time. So um, I didn't have any tip ups in the sign. Uh, so I uh, had to stop it manually. So uh, here in just a second, we're going to see uh, what happens when it starts to make that cut right here. Uh, then let's say it stopped and hit a tip up. Um, the consumables went bad. The torch didn't fire. Something happened. And if we go over and look at the actual design edge screen, uh, you can see the yellow crosshairs and that's showing you exactly where the torch is on the material. So I can look at that and see that the middle of that A uh, is what it was cutting. Uh, and then if you were to fix that error and tell it to start cutting again, it could take off. But if you click and this happens, then you wind up with this. A screen that has nothing selected. You don't have any idea where uh, it needs to go after it finishes uh, this uh, A. So we do know, let me zoom in here, we do know that that A needs to be cut and it's actually cut uh, I believe to about right there. Um, and I'm going to flip back over to the shop video here in a second uh, to show you that. Um, but what we do know is we need to continue cutting from this point on. Um, and to do that, we're going to use the select window. 
so I'm going to demo that back on the shop computer um, and how we actually um, can move on from where we're at and let it finish cutting. But I want to take just a minute here before we do that uh, and show you the select window uh, and a few basic things about it. So the shortcut uh, that's on the mouse pads that I have uh, that I make for the Design Edge shortcuts, uh, it's kind of a reminder top left corner of the mouse pad uh, for the reason that the button you want to push is in the top left corner to get to this select window. It's hard to call it anything. It's a little in yay tilde uh, key, but it is the, the button we're looking for is the one just to the left of the number one on your top row of your keyboard. Uh, so when you push that, uh, it will open up a window. It's up here in view, uh, select, but as you know, if you've watched any of my videos or been to my class, uh, I don't use those menus. I don't use the little uh, menu bars that just slow you down entirely too much once you start getting busy. So that little button opens up this window and this gives you a list. Uh, and this list is every path that exists in this drawing. And there are a few things that it can tell us. Uh, right off by looking. So if you've followed what we do about uh, the Activate Level screen, then you know when you see a little checkbox in Design Edge, sometimes that tech checkbox can have uh, properties other than just a big black check mark. And the same is true here. Uh, and so we can have a few different things. As you can see, this open paths is grayed out. And what that tells us is that there are no open paths in this drawing whatsoever. And you can see the other two have white boxes that are empty. And that means that closed paths and cut paths, but both of these exist in the drawing. But since the check boxes are empty, none of them are selected. Now, if I were to go back here and select all of the cut paths and open that back up, then you would see a couple of things have changed. First, anything that's uh, selected in the drawing is now highlighted blue over here. So in this big list of paths, all of the cut paths have been selected. And it shows you that by putting this little black checkbox uh, in here, this little black check mark. And that tells me that cut paths do exist in the drawing, and a black one means that all of them are selected. If I unselect one of them, then I see a gray check mark. That means that cut paths do exist in the drawing. Some of them are selected, but not all of them are selected. Okay, so it's important to know those uh, few little uh, quirks about how it tells you uh, what paths in the drawing are selected. You can also use these boxes uh, to select and unselect things. So if you open up your select window and you want to, let's say you wanted to delete all of the cut paths in your drawing, you click on the cut paths box and it puts a checkbox in it. You close it, you push delete, and now all of the cut paths are gone. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to page up and undo that. So that shows you a quick way to select. One other thing uh, that's worth noting is, let's say I had all of these selected, and I opened my select window. Now everything's selected, and let's say that I intended to only select the close paths, not the cut paths. While I have my selection open, I can uncheck the cut paths, and then it will leave selected only the regular closed paths. So you can use that to add to and, or to take from. If you click it, it will add everything that exists. But if you have a selection, uh, then you can use it to undo it. And that's really helpful uh, if you're trying to separate open paths from closed paths. For example, uh, a lot of times in my drawings, uh, I need to do that to, to take open paths out of something or delete open paths. And you can just select everything, select everything in a section, and then if you've accidentally included some closed paths or needed to in your selection, you can open that select window, uncheck the closed paths, and then you'll have just your open paths selected. So uh, you can, it's a very powerful tool. But we're also going to use this very tool uh, to pick up where we left off. And so uh, we're going to do that uh, by uh, selecting or looking at what it last cut, okay? 
uh, or needs to cut or, or uh, is about to cut. And so let's flip back over to the shop computer and kind of look at briefly how that's going to happen for us. So here's what we're seeing when we look on the table. Uh, and you can see there's the middle of that uh, A is what we know it is from looking at the screen uh, where that yellow cross area is. And we see how it began the lead in and it started around, uh, but it didn't even make it to that first corner. Uh, so we're going to take that knowledge and go over to the computer uh, design edge on the shop computer. So here we are looking at the screen of the shop computer and there's our uh, a, the center of the A, where we have the breaks, uh, or the, the unfinished cut. So uh, what we're going to do is open that select window that we talked about earlier. Uh, and when we do that, uh, it's going to give us the list of all the paths. And you want to make sure and look at that top left-hand corner where it says list by. Make sure that that is on the top one, which is path order, because that's going to be what we need to use uh, to be able to select the ones that have yet to cut. So we have it on path order uh, and you can see the little blue bar showing you the center of that A. So what I want to do here since I need to make a change to that A uh, is to select the one right below it with the left mouse pointer uh, left button click, drag it all the way to the bottom. It may need to scroll, uh, but what that's going to do is select all the remaining paths in this drawing that have yet to cut after that center of that A. Uh, so now then I can go and I can group those uh, paths uh, to so that it'll remember that selection. And then I can come in and fix that A. If I didn't need to fix that, uh, you could skip that step. If I needed to cut it, you could include it in the selection, or if you just needed to cut from the next one on. So here what I'm going to do is just break that path and then line from the end point uh, and J for join uh, to make myself a new little lead in uh, so that we won't be able to see that spot. And so then I'll just tell it to cut it uh, with just that one selected and it will just run right over there uh, and finish that little cut in the center of the A and I can make sure it looks good. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. You can't tell that there was a problem. Then you can go back to the computer and just click on the perimeter path or any path that you know yet has to cut um, so that you'll select that entire group. Then I can go over and ungroup it and then I can let it finish cutting. You do want to ungroup paths because if you have something grouped then Plasma Cam cannot uh, resume automatically uh, anyway. So you'll have to go through this process every time. So make sure that you don't group uh, cut paths before you cut them. Uh, so now it's just going to go ahead and finish cutting the rest of this sign for us. Uh, and uh, we've successfully chosen uh, all of those paths that had yet to cut, even though it is going to be, you know, jumping around and all over the place. So the reason that I chose to uh, select the rest minus the little middle that I needed to fix uh, is because when I need to break that path and make a change to it, uh, then I can do that and it doesn't affect the order. If I, if I had just broken that little path uh, and uh, been able to cut it just like it was, uh, or I didn't need to break the path in the first place, uh, then I wouldn't have needed to go to the trouble of, of grouping the others. Uh, and the reason I did that, though, is because uh, when you join up, when you add to it and join, as soon as you join that path with something, you're actually uh, creating a new path, sort of, um, and, and it plops it all the way at the end. Uh, so I would have lost my place uh, if I had edited that path and then tried to select from that one to the end because it would automatically have put it at the end of the list even though it was out in the middle. So if you're going to do a join function on uh, the path that you need to edit, it's just as easy to pick the rest of them, uh, make the edit that you need and cut that one little path 
uh, and then go ahead and go back, ungroup them, uh, and then finish cutting with all of them selected. So, man, that's the easiest way to get you uh, back to cutting uh, when you've lost your place. It's really not hard. <clears throat> it takes a lot longer to describe it, I think, in a video than it does to actually uh, get it done. And so, uh, it's after you do it a few times, uh, just really becomes <laughs> second nature. So. There's our little sign that we cut out of 20 gauge, uh, thin stuff, but it was easy for me to throw on the table. Uh, and just to kind of demonstrate to you how well it works when your settings are correct, it might be a little bit warm there, um, that pops right out of there. Almost no dross on the back. Um, ready yet that's a hot spot uh, but ready to uh, to clean up and go and for 20 gauge you know that's a really a really a pretty good accomplishment I think so there's the back uh, you can cut just like that and uh, in your own shop and uh, it's really a lot of fun hopefully this little video has helped you a little bit uh, and uh, you can tuck this trick back uh, in your bag of tricks for in the future when you uh, invariably will uh, run into a problem with your helper, uh, whether that's your helper or you just calling your accidental click your helper. <laughs> that's just fine. Uh, it's going to happen. You're going to you're going to accidentally clear that selection uh, if you haven't already. So just tuck that back. It's a handy way uh, to get picked up where you left off. And hopefully you learned a little more about the select window today. Very powerful tool that I use very often. Uh, in both designing and using the table. So if you have not heard of our Learn Plasma Cam workshops, uh, then please come see us. We're at learnplasmacam.com, uh, also on Facebook at Learn Plasma Cam. Um, and so just, you know, look into it. It's a three-day uh, workshop that I hold at a, uh, a hotel conference room. We do, uh, if there's an owner nearby, uh, try to get out and uh, have an optional field trip one day uh, just to go see a table cut uh, and just to kind of learn some more about how the settings that we talk about all day long on the first day uh, affect uh, the table operation and you can kind of see how it reacts once we make those changes. Um, so just a lot of fun way to do it. The next one coming up is in Tulsa. I think there are eight or nine seats left for that class. Class size is limited to 20. Uh, I bring 10 uh, laptops to class with Design Edge on them. So at worst, you would be two people to a, a computer. Uh, but a lot of times people do bring uh, their laptop or even a desktop uh, and follow along on their own computer. But there's some definitely hands-on learning that happens. Uh, and so you don't really need to bring anything but yourself. Everybody gets a one of my Design Edge shortcut mouse pads. Uh, and it's really a, a fun time to get together, talk to other owners, learn from each other, uh, but really go over the very basics all the way to the advanced with Design Edge uh, to get you up and going. So if you have not uh, looked into those and think that might be an option for you uh, to get you a leg up and shave some of the learning curve off uh, of your machine um, and operation, then, uh, then please uh, look us up. I think it's a great help and I just love doing it. So uh, until next time, uh, I'll be getting ready for Tulsa and uh, in the next couple of months and so I probably won't do another video until uh, a little closer to time and may just do it as a uh, live Facebook live question and answer. So hope this video finds you well and everybody had a great holiday. Uh, many thanks. We'll talk to you later.